Mm. I, I just heard the Lord say, what is church? To many, it's an obligation. To many, it's one hour, maybe two, going somewhere and even getting blessed. The Lord says, what is church? The Lord says, the church is that which I've died for. The Lord says, the church is a family. The Lord says, the church is a relationship. The Lord says, even though you may meet in a building, the church is not a building. The church is alignment one with another. Even a uh, basket, if you would, says the Lord, for those who are hurting, that come forth that don't know me. The Lord says, what is church? The Lord says, it is a place where my glory would dwell. What is church? It is the glory of my being. For it is that which I have birthed through my own precious blood, by my own spirit, says the Lord. That I may have a bride. Jesus. Glorious. Jesus. Fully committed to me. Even as I am committed to it, says the Lord. That's here, Lord, saying, be the church. Enjoy the church. Enter into the church of being the bride that you are to me, says the Lord. Those uh, watching by television, I, I want to encourage you. We're going to be uh, sharing a message on Romans 8 that's going to be life-changing. Uh, but before that, we're going to have some other share that I think is going to be applicable to your life. Very powerful. And uh, God does speak to us, amen, in dreams and visions. And I've been praying for more dreams, amen, and more visions. Because sometimes, how I many know we need some things to bypass our heads? Amen. How many know that your head can get in the way of your heart? Amen? Can you say that? I'll tell you what. I know mine can. And Hi, everyone. Good morning. Uh, praise the Lord. Last night, he, uh, I feel the Lord gave me a dream, and it was about uh, the church here as well as just the church in general. And I had a dream that I was here um, worshiping, except for this building. It wasn't this building, how dreams tend to be. It was more, we were like up like on a fourth floor of a whole, like um, a whole floor of a building. We were all worshiping. We were all down on our face, just worshiping the Lord and just feel the presence of the Lord. They're so strong. Um, I heard uh, something outside the window. So I went to the window and there was like a huge, large flower pot and like on the windowsill, like an outdoor windowsill pot. And I saw it starting to slide, and we all like kind of rushed to the window. And as it started to fall, we watched it, and I was just praying. We were just praying to the Lord, oh, please let no one be down below there that would get hurt from it. And um, it went and it crashed on a little um, house, like kind of across, right across the street. It was like a, kind of like a broken down house. And the, it broke the front awning on the house as it came smashing down. And this um, elderly woman came outside. I immediately ran all the way down the steps. And across the street to her, and she's like, "Oh no, they're they're like vandalizing me again." And I'm like, "No, no, no! It came from it came from up there. It came down and it crashed." I said, "But it's okay. We all saw it. You know, it will be covered by insurance." Like she was very burdened by it. It will be covered by insurance. It's okay. It's okay. So I went to um to to give her a hug, and as I went to hug her, she transformed into a kitten. I know that sounds strange, but she transformed into a kitten. And as I held her, I just felt the love between us. And, it, and as soon as, like, I woke up from that, I just felt, like, right away, you know, wow. And I just felt the Lord saying, there's a break in the spirit. There's somewhere in the spirit realm, well, there's a break. And what's coming from this break is pure love. And that, um, that, that I... Yeah, that just this love that just the, it was like a mutual sharing of love and and compassion and and um and ease in the spirit of um of fear or, or of like hatred that may have been around her was broken and she was transformed by this love. And I as I was sitting here this morning just looking for some scripture I found in First Peter two um two I'm sorry, first Peter one twenty two seeing ye purified your souls in obeying the truth through the spirit unto unfeigning love of the brethren 
See that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently. So praise the Lord for that, and I hope that touched somebody. Amen. Praise, praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I'll tell you what, I, uh, that just really, just really ministered to me, and I trust it ministered to you too, because uh, you know, some things are taught and some things are caught, and uh, love is something that can be caught. Amen? And uh, but when uh, Jackie said that you know, she had that dream and that word, I, well, I just sensed just, just the sovereignty of God in the sense that he just did that, you know what I'm saying? And that, that's just very, very powerful. So I want to encourage you to think about that and just, uh, you know, there's a lot of people that really, really uh, are broken. And you know what? And uh, a lot of people are broken, even people broken from the church. And uh, things have gone on. And, uh, you know, when something else happens, you know what I'm saying? It's just like, you know, here we go again or whatever. And uh, the bottom line is this, you know, when that hug was given, that love was given, you know, transformation took place. Amen? Amen. And, and I, I tell you, there's, uh, there's, a, there's just a real, there's a lot there. Amen. Really, there, there really is a lot there. So, uh, amen. I really, uh, I, I believe with all my heart in the teaching and preaching of the word, which I do, of course, but I believe that everybody, uh, you know, can uh, enter in the hearing from God. And obviously we do that a lot on Wednesday nights where everybody shares. But uh, I, on Sunday mornings too, I like it when people, we just have more and more people share in the sense that uh, what God's spoken. So Kathy, uh, I think it was through a text. Uh, I think you, she was coming back from teaching. Uh, uh, and uh, I got this text or voice, I can't remember, but there was just a lot of excitement in it. And it was like something that God just spoke to her. So I asked her to, uh, to just to share uh, briefly before I, I enter into the teaching on Romans 8. And, uh, you know, it, Revelation is the most powerful force on the earth. Amen. Matthew 16, 16 to 18. Uh, Jesus told Peter, you're a son of Revelation, a child of the Holy Ghost. And he said the gates of hell cannot withstand the spirit of revelation. When you have something in your heart, the devil will do the best he can to take it from you. But as you stand, i tell you what, he will falter. You will not be the one that falters, but he will be the one, amen, that falters. So when she got this, I thought, man, that is really, really strong. I had uh, someone years ago, I don't even know, I was ministering something and after a Bible study, he got I think he called me up like 2.30 in the morning and said, God showed me this. And I'm thinking, man, I wish he showed you in the afternoon. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But uh, it was, uh, was life-changing. I mean, it was powerful. Praise God to him and, you know, glory to God. Sometimes when you get a revelation like that, amen, you got to tell somebody. Amen? And so all of us, you know, are children of revelation. But it is that which we stand on, of course, is a revelation of the word. So, Kathy, you can share that, you know, before I share, that'd be, that'd be great. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you for letting me share. God is good all the time. It was Tuesday, May, May 31st, and I've been tutoring, and uh, it's up north a little bit. And while I was driving up to uh, tutoring at a, someone's home, um, I was just musing over Holy Spirit and my need for more. Did you ever do that? Did you ever think about, you know, just looking at scriptures, but, you know, really talking to God? It was from my heart. Remind you, I have the music on, like I always do, in my car. And uh, I was just thinking, you know, I really, really want more. I feel the Holy Spirit. Well, um, and so I felt the Holy Spirit um, just breathe down on me and spoke to me some things. And, he, and I was thinking about... How am I going to get, can I use your scripture? Can you give me, hand me your, your Bible? Can you, can you just hand it to me? I was like, Lord, thank you. How am I going to get more out of this? This is what you've given unto us. You spoke with some guy. I think they were all guys, yeah? And they wrote stuff, and some women were quoted. How am I going to get more out of this? Because I was seeking more of him. Remember how we always tell you, you know, if you want more God, you want more of the word, it's going to be synonymous to God. And so that was me. And I was crying out to God, can you believe doing that behind a wheel? <laughs> yeah, that was me. And so I was minding my own business, if you know what I mean. It was just 
just talking to God from my heart. And I uh, felt the Lord spoke to me in that attitude. And he said, Spirit of Grace. It's the Spirit of Grace, the Holy Spirit of Grace under revelation. And that's what he was speaking to me. It's he who will give me the revelation knowledge that I need to believe him, to believe scriptures for my wholeness. You know, tears came to my eyes. It was, it went so deep, but I'm behind the wheel of a car and I got to get to my job and I got to be there on time too. So I asked the Holy Spirit, don't let me forget. And so as soon as I'm done, because I can't write it down and say, you know, note to self. I can't do, do you know what I mean? Can no texting and driving. So, so the Holy Spirit did, as soon as I was done with my job, teaching and tutoring, I um, drove out of their driveway, drove down the street and pulled off safely in this safe place. And then I went to call Mike and he wasn't answer, able to answer his phone. And so I went to voicemail and I was all excited. I told him a little bit about this and this is the Spirit of Grace. And I'm sharing this with you because, see, it never gets old with me. And when the Lord, you know, kind of jump starts your heart sometimes because sometimes um, our well gets dry and we need refreshed and we need that water and we need whatever we need and it's how he speaks to us and so this is God speaking to me and so I just made it my determined purpose um, that I was going to um, seek him and allow him to go deeper in my heart and I want him to go deeper in your heart and uh, I just bless you in Jesus' name. And he'll take you there. He'll take you where you need to go. And he'll take you into places in the word that you didn't even know were there. And I, I was telling Mary Kay yesterday, and he talked, she talked a little bit about this. If you ever see, like, do you ever get a door prize or a present from somebody? And there's something in that bag. Or there's something in there that you know is going to be good because it's just for you. God has not hidden things from us. He's hidden things for us to discover. Thank you, Brother Pastor Mike. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Kath. Amen. It's a good word. Amen. It's so good because it's for each of us. Amen. For the word to work in our lives, we've got to receive it in a very personal fashion. And I know that sounds simple. You've heard it before. But as long as you think it's for somebody else, as long as you think somebody else has a corner on the market and yeah, it works for Kenneth Hagin or Kenneth Copeland or Billy Graham or whoever, you're going to not receive fully or either will I. Amen? But when we understand, one of my favorite verses is in Colossians 1.12 where it says, God has made it possible for each of us to enter into the inheritance that God has given us. Amen? Praise God. So, when we really enter into that reality that you can enter into revelation, you know, like a Kenneth Copeland or Kenneth Hagin, you can enter into a revelation like the Bible says in 2 Peter 1.1, 1, 1, just like Peter did. And then it goes on to say that you can enter into revelation because of the blood of Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit like Jesus did. Wow, now you're talking. And someone says, that's just too much for me. Well, you know what? The gospel is too much for our natural minds. Amen? Really, it's too good. But the bottom line is, that's why he's given us a heart to believe. Amen? And the spirit of grace is the key. I know we hear a lot about grace today, and sometimes, even in a wrong way, you know, it's almost like a sloppy grace type of thing. But real grace, it, it, it's the only way. Amen? We know that we're saved by grace and grace alone. Amen? I merited favor. Ephesians 2, 8, and 9. But you know what? We can't make it after we get saved except without grace. Nobody can. The Bible says in Colossians, as you receive Christ Jesus, so therefore walk. I don't know about you, the older I get, the more I, I, I come to see the Lord, the more I see that when he said I can do nothing of myself, nothing means nothing. Amen? I need his grace. Yeah, I have to make decisions, absolutely. I have to make decisions to get in the Word. I have to make decisions to walk by the faith that I have, to mix the faith I have. But even then, I need the grace of God. You know, God understands. Man, what we've been through, He understands what we're going to go through. And He says, my grace is sufficient. And, you know, that's not just a, you know, a trite statement, a statement that, you know, uh, it, it's reality. Amen. How many of you ever been in a place where, man, if God didn't come through, you weren't going to make it? Maybe it's because you felt so weak. 
Maybe because you felt so de de depressed, despondent. We've all been there. And that's where his grace comes in. Amen? And to fulfill destiny, to enter into really partaking of Jesus, eating of Jesus, man, really being who he wants us to be. It's, it really is all about grace. And I was excited when Kathy shared that with me because we're going to be entering into some things. Grace and glory, they go together. We're going to be seeing how grace and glory are really are coupled together, praise God. And when you're walking in grace, how glory accompanies it, praise God. It's just real powerful, hallelujah. So, Amen, amen. So are you happy? Praise God. God is good, amen. amen. He is good. Thank you, Jesus. And I really appreciate that, which uh, was shared in a really big time, praise God. So amen. Turn with me, if you would, to Psalm 27. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I mean, I, boy, there's something good here today. Really, something, yeah, something really good. So whatever you did today, do it next Sunday, okay? <laughs> if you, you know, if you wore your special socks, wear them. No, I'm just, I'm just kidding. Isn't that how religion gets started? Amen? <laughs> yeah, God moved because I had a pair of blue socks. And now he moved just because, <laughs> amen, he's good. Amen? All right. We can, but we can have some fun. How many know we need to laugh sometimes? Amen? Glory to God. I, I think God does some things just to pick us up and laugh. I've told this story so many times, but I'll tell it again. I know sometimes we can get too serious, you know. I, I know I can do that. And Kathy's good for me. She lightens things up and she said, you know, just stop thinking so much and just whatever. But uh, we were praying years ago. We were in campus ministry. And a uh, real precious girl loved God, but the enemy was coming against her. You know what I'm saying? And just... Uh, Man, she's fighting depression, inferiority, and uh, the devil is just coming against her. Long story short, uh, Kathy and I got together with her, ended up praying with her, and, uh, you know, God just really moved in her life. But uh, before we prayed, I said, the Lord just shows me uh, there's a spirit trying to come against you to see yourself as inferior. And I said, I see a spirit of abasement. You know, abasement, you know, brings you down, amen, rather than lifts you up, excuse me. So I said, I see a spirit of abasement on you. So uh, we prayed for just blessing and deliverance. And so we saw her a couple of weeks later. We said, how you doing? She said, well, I'm doing so much better since you guys ministered to me. And we agreed in prayer. And I said, praise the Lord. She says, one thing I don't get, though. She says, uh, every night I open up the cellar door and go down. And she says, I still don't get that, the spirit of abasement, you know, type of thing. I said, I said, well, I said, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. But every, once in a while, if I get down, I always think of the spirit of abasement. Amen. Glory to God. God is good. Amen. All right. Psalm 27. Uh, God's always taking us deeper. Amen. Further. And uh, I know he's been dealing with me about just being, mixing my faith more. Uh, no fear at all, and, and just trying to get me to that place, amen? And all of us, you know, the enemy will try to come in, you know what I'm saying, uh, in different ways, different forms. And that's why, again, we need fresh manna every day, amen? Praise God. In Psalm 27, the Bible says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though a host should encamp against me, my heart should not fear. The war should rise against me, and this will I be confident. One thing I, I desire to the Lord, that also will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and inquire in his temple. Amen. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock, and now shall my head be lifted up above my enemies round about me. Therefore, while offering his tabernacle sacrifices of joy, I will sing, yeah, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Amen. Bible doesn't say there isn't any enemies. Amen. It says he prepares a table before us in the midst of our enemies. It says he causes us to rise up and to know that he will grace us. Amen unto victory. And I want to encourage us that he wants us to be free. All of us, we've gone through things. 
And I'll tell you, if it wasn't for grace and mercy, there's none of us that would be here. And, uh, but he's freeing us, amen, to come into a place where uh, we are the head and not the tail. To come into the place where, hallelujah, our, our glory to God, God graces us regarding our past. He graces us regarding the vision for the future. But he puts us in the now, amen, to the place where it's about now. And that's sometimes easier said than done, amen. And we understand this as one thing we have to be careful with as Christians. Sometimes it is appropriate just to have faith and believe. Sometimes it's more appropriate to say, you know what? I've been there. It's easier said than done. And let's walk through the, this together. Amen? Amen. You know, the key is there's always going to be some valleys to walk through the valley. Amen? I will walk through the valley. And that's, as a church, we want to encourage one another to walk through the valleys. Amen? So we can get to the high places. Glory to God. And we're made for high places. We really are. We are really made, amen, to be as the eagle. And uh, I know we shared that before, but man, it, it just bears repetition. Amen. All right. Let, let's go to Romans 7. Let's we'll start out there. And then we're going to enter into Romans 8. And Romans 7, here, here's what's kind of crazy in, in, in the sense that there have been more songs written about Romans 7 than Romans 8. I think most people, they never got to Romans 8 because they got so discouraged reading Romans 7, okay? <laughs> Seriously. Uh, we did a survey one time. It was at Grove City College where uh, we had started a group there called Warriors, still the largest group on that campus, and I have a couple hundred kids that meet weekly. And, uh, but there was uh, a young man who was a college student at the time, Caleb. He's a lawyer now in, in Tulsa, Oklahoma. But... Uh, we just get a little, little survey. We were, you know, went door to door in, in uh, residence halls and just said, you know, uh, if there's one thing that you could ask prayer for, what would it be? And I mean, like 90%, we met most of the guys, it was like, help me to not get frustrated with the scripture of Romans 7. That's a Christian college, a lot of kids that were saved. Because it is what it is. And I kept asking them, what do you mean it is what it is? And they would quote this verse. I mean, they quoted this. And good, good young men, you know what I'm saying? Good, good students. Love the Lord. That just never been taught, perhaps, like we're teaching now. And they would quote this verse. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold unto sin. For that which I do, I allow not... For what I would do, what I hate to do, I end up doing. Boy, that, that's encouraging, isn't it? You know, the things that I want to do, that God tells me to do, I end up not doing those things. And the things that I hate, that I would never want to do, I always end up doing. And then say, you know what? It's so frustrating, but I, my prayer is for grace to receive that that's the way it is. And I'm thinking, man, if that's the way it is, man, we need another dip. You know, there's something not right. I mean, that's not good news, is it? Right. My gosh, the things that I hate, don't want to do, I end up doing. The things I really want to do, I can't do. Somehow that doesn't go with Philippians 4.13. You know what I'm saying? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. But they're very sincere. Good young people, amen? But they've never been taught. And, and I just told him, I said, here's the deal. Romans 7 is about the person that's not saved. Romans 7 is about the person that is under the law. Romans 7 is about what we would term right now a non-Christian, but who is religious. How many of you know before you were saved, man, you tried and tried and tried, but it didn't work? Amen. Man, I tried to read the Bible a few times before I came to Jesus, and it was it didn't register. You know, really, it just didn't register. Someone said it makes all the difference when you get to know the author. Amen. Uh -huh. Praise God. And 
But Romans 7 is all about the frustration and the reality of inability regarding the unbeliever, even as religious as he might be. Glory to God. And here's what's so exciting. As difficult and as really horrible, you know, the condition of Romans 7, Romans 8 is amazing. Glory to God. So we're just going to use this as a foundation, praise God, because in the next weeks, we're going to be talking about excitement and expectation. Glory to God. Brad had a word a while ago, might have been a year ago, that God was calling us to excitement and expectation. Now, here's what, you know, I counsel a lot of people, a lot of Christians, and I've had so many Christians say, you know what, I don't want to hear about excitement and expectation because I've tried that and it didn't work. How many know you don't try God? Amen? A lot of people say, you know, I tried that confession thing for six weeks and it didn't work. Well, the, see, you don't try God. You don't try the word, you work the word. Amen? Until it works. Amen? Glory to God. It's like you don't try getting married. Amen? How many know that's not going to work? I tell you, first time or second time something comes up that, man, you didn't understand? Wow. You know what I'm saying? It's like, whoo, well, hey, we... We tried this for six weeks. First couple of weeks were good, praise God. Amen? But then, hey, it just must not be God. Amen? Must not be God because, you know what, when you went to iron my pants, you burnt them. You know what I'm saying? Can't be God, you know? But you don't try it. Amen? You make a commitment to it. Amen? And by grace, continue, hallelujah, until you see manifestation. All right. So let's look at Romans 8. Hallelujah, as a foundation for excitement and expectation. Now, we're not saying that there's not challenges. We're certainly not saying that. Uh, I, I, I think Kathy was with me. I think we were at a wedding. And uh, there was a, a guy there prayed over the, uh, you know, after, you know, at the, the meal that they had, you know, at the, the, at the celebration. And he was a Christian guy. And he said, Lord, I... We just receive, you know, we're excited about this person getting married and this person. And, and uh, he said, now we just bless you and we thank you for rebuking the calories in Jesus' name. <laughs> and I thought to myself, that isn't how it works. <laughs> you know? Glory to God. But uh, it would be nice if it did, but it doesn't. Amen. But the bottom line, there are challenges. Glory to God. We go from desire to discipline to delight. Amen. Just not from desire to delight. There's discipline in between. Amen. Glory to God. All right. So let's, let's look at Romans 8. Hallelujah. It says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Oh, man. So God's not condemning you. He's not condemning me. Amen? If we missed it. At the same time, it doesn't mean that we don't have to work on things. Amen? I've had people say, you know what? I don't have to deal with this because I'm not under condemnation. Well, if you really enter into the truth of not being under condemnation, it will elicit a desire to work on things that you need to work on. Amen? But God's not condemning us. God's not blaming you for different things and blaming me. Amen? Glory to God. You know, the CD series, we, we did four CDs, No Condemnation. We've given that thousands of those. And, and it resonates with people because the devil's always there to try to condemn you, to try to make you second best, to try to say, you know what, it's your fault for this and your, their, your fault for that. Can I tell you something? The devil is a God of false guilt. I'm going to say that again. The devil is a God of false guilt. And you know what's amazing to me? I, I'll just tell you from experience in counseling. Many times... The people that have the greatest hearts towards God, those who love God the most, can fall into that trap because they want God the most. Do you understand what I'm saying? If you don't want God, you're not going to accept accountability. But when you want God so much, you can accept some things that you shouldn't accept. Amen? Glory to God. It's not, I tell you, false guilt is one of the major 
uh, strategies of the enemy. I, I tell you what, we do the best we can. And I tell you, it's never in the natural going to be good enough. And, and the bottom line is we just have to trust God and we go on from there. And I someone say, you know, I, my uncle John, or, you, you know, died. And I don't think he was saved. And I feel it was my, my fault. I said, well, well, why do you feel that way? Well, they said I prayed for him. I fasted for him. I did this and that. And evidently it was my fault because I'm the only Christian in the family. And first of all, I said, how do you know he didn't accept the Lord? You don't know. But second, I said, you know, it's, it's again, false guilt. Okay, so we stay out of that stuff. There's therefore now no condemnation, no condemnation, not a little condemnation, there's none to them which are in Christ Jesus, hallelujah, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. I don't know about you, but I put my trust in the fact that I'm in Christ Jesus. Glory to God. You know, if there's a tornado coming, and you could get into a place, a shelter, where a tornado cannot affect you and harm you. When you're in that shelter, amen, I, I tell you, you're free. We say, we're going to be talking about freedom. God wants you free. Man, the blood has paid a price that we can be free. Amen. If you're in false guilt, you can't be free. If, if I'm just thinking about this or that and how I miss, you know, I can't be free. God wants us to be free. Amen. He wants you to trust God. He wants you to trust yourself. He wants you to be able to trust others. Uh, amen. Glory to God. And that's a whole nother deal, but we'll, we'll get into that too. Amen. Because we want to enter into things that are practical. Amen. We want to enter into things that, man, where the tire hits the road. Amen. So we can have victory over it. Praise God. So, man, if you're in that shelter in a tornado, I mean, is there, and it's ripping up houses around you. It's ripping up trees. Wow. You don't say, wow, well, man, look at me. Whew, man, ain't I something? Aren't I something? Man, all these people, man, getting their houses ripped up. And look at me. You know what? The Lord looked at you and said, you are stupid. <laughs> Amen. You know, really. Amen. Just tell it like it is. I don't know if he'd say that exactly. But, I mean, he said some things to Peter. He said he was a devil. So, amen. <laughs> you know, one day, man, one moment, Peter, man, you're the head of the rock of the church. Next meeting, you're a devil. Peter's probably thinking, whoa. You know what I'm saying? But the bottom line is, that that'd be crazy. Amen? You're free. You're safe. Not because of you. It's because who you, what you're in. Amen? You're in the shelter. Amen? Amen? Glory to God. You're not safe because of how tall you are, how good you are, uh, this, your education. There's only one thing that makes you safe. And that's because you're in the shelter. Glory to God. Amen? Hallelujah. How many know we can get free when we understand that we are in Christ Jesus? Glory to God. Man, when Noah made that ark, I mean, it took a hundred years to make that ark. Isn't that something? A hundred years. It's because God's so merciful. He's given people chance after chance after chance. Hundred years being mopped. I mean, come on. What, was that again you're building? Uh, uh, rain. They never had rain. Glory to God. Amen. Hey, what are you building? There's, there's never been a flood. Amen. But see, we're in, but man, when the ark was there, they laughed at him the whole time. But I tell you, when those flood waters started rising, they were knocking at that door, weren't they? And, uh, oh, man, we're in Christ. We're in the ark. Glory to God. I, I, I just start sharing, because I, I, Romans 8 is one of my favorite chapters to teach on. I meditate on a lot. And uh, but I remember when uh, my grandson, my oldest uh, grandson, child, he was in the womb. And, uh, man, it was a bad report, wasn't it? I mean, it was real bad. I, I have the, uh, what's that called? The sonogram. The sonogram. And uh, it wasn't good. His one kidney was so enlarged, it was about to explode, and they were going to have to take him, and he would never have survived as little as he was. And because it could have killed my daughter, and you know, type of thing. And, but I remember just believing, glory to God. And I came to God and said, you know what? 
He's in you, God. He's not just in the womb. He's in you. Hallelujah. And if he's in you, hallelujah, we're going to have, have a good report. And the devil challenged me. We went through a lot. But I tell you, I'll never forget. I got pictured a second son again. And it's as normal as normal can be. Glory to God. And I still have it. Praise God. But the key is, it, see, we need to be excited about things. Amen? It's okay to be excited. Amen? In fact, it's just not okay. It's needful. Because if God says, you're in me, so when the tornado comes and the hurricanes, you're going to be okay. We need to be excited about that. Amen? Glory to God. And because we just need to be excited. And again, I understand. The devil's, going to, the devil's told me different times. He said, you can't get too excited. Because remember last time you got excited? You know, and uh, man, uh, this happened after you were excited. You said, man, I, you know, I felt like the Lord said, I'm going to win somebody through you at least like once a week, a soul. And then, man, you're going to go out the first time and you get sick. You go out the second time and the first 10 people you talk to, they slam the door in your face. And the devil reminds you that and says, remember, you don't get too excited. And your soul says, yeah, I know. I tell you what, Lord, I'll get excited when all these people start coming to Jesus. And God says, no, you need to get excited because everything's okay. Amen? Glory to God, because your soul will talk to you. Your soul will talk to you, and you got to talk back to it. Amen? And there's some battles I've lost, but I'll tell you what, we win the war. Glory to God, we win the war. Glory to God. Amen. All right. So again, it's hard to get off. So what, who are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. And that's the key. The Spirit of grace. It's not about you. It's not about me. It's about Him inside of you and me. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. And He will put you over. Man, I've shared this many times. You know, when I was a young Christian and I just go into Catherine Coleman service Friday night. It was amazing in Pittsburgh. And then that's night. So it would be Saturday morning, Saturday before Easter. Wake up. My mother had, she had months to live because of complications due to spinal bifida. So I, I was home just to be with her because, I mean, there's no way she was going to make it. But there was a fire. And our house burned down and she died of smoke inhalation. And my dad was in the hospital real bad, West Penn burn unit. And I made it out somehow. I was sitting in front of West Penn Hospital. I mean, I, my clothes were just drenched with smoke. And I said, God, I want to follow you, but it, I just, I'm just not strong enough. And I didn't know anything about grace. I was just a baby Christian. And somebody came down. He ended up being the best man in my wedding. Good, great guy. And he said, man, I just come down to be with you. I said, all right. And I told him, I said, I want to follow you. He said, I know you do. And I, actually, I was... Uh, been Christian for going on three years. And, you know, and I was a leader in our fellowship at college and stuff, but still young in the Lord. And I just said, man, I said, I said, the strength's just not there. And he prayed for me. And uh, all I can say is this. I, I said three little words. I just said, Lord, help me. How many know sometimes those are the best words you can say? And the Lord, I just said, I tell you, something rose up in me. I know it was the spirit of grace infusing strength into me that I, I didn't have in myself. And out of that strength, uh, during the funeral, the, the visitation, I was on the track team up here, and they were running West Virginia University. So they had to come through pretty close to my hometown to get back to the Slip Rock. And the whole track team was there. And I shared the gospel with each and every one of them. Of the goodness of God. But see, that's about, amen, on who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Amen? So that's God in you. Amen? God in me. Hallelujah. Amen? Glory to God. So we can tell people about the spirit of grace. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. All right. Man, there's so much there. Now the verse 2 says this. That we're free for the law of the spirit of life. In Christ Jesus, 
Notice that word in Christ Jesus again. If, if, when you look at the epistles, that phrase in Christ Jesus is used just really scores of times. In the book of Ephesians, it's over 30 times it's utilized. It says, For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. What's the law of sin and death? It's when you and I get back into trying to do things, whether it's unknowingly, unconsciously, or knowingly, in our own strength. And the lost sin and death is falling short of the glory of God, exchanging the glory of God for sin. Uh, but the Bible says, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus set me free from the law of sin. How many know God works by laws? Amen. Most Christians, I'll be honest with you, don't believe that. Well, God will just do what he wants, when he wants, how he wants. No, God, God works by laws. Amen? I mean, you see, in the natural, there's laws. Amen? I mean, you just say, you know, yeah, I'm just going to walk by faith. And you don't see, look to see if a car is coming. When you cross the street, it's not going to be good, Christian or not. Okay? It's like, there's laws. There's a law of gravity. Amen? Man, you get to on top of this roof and jump off and say, I'm a Christian. Guess what? The law of gravity, it works for the believer and the sinner just alike. Amen? So we appreciate the natural laws. Here's what gets me excited. There's laws in the spirit realm. You know, the word life and death in the words of our, our, our mouth. There's laws in the spirit realm. And the greatest law is the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. It's exciting when we understand the laws of God. There was a girl that uh, Kathy and I discipled a while ago. She was from uh, Uganda. Her name was Beatrice Kiyomono. Just a really precious young lady. And uh, myself and somebody else from the church, we we're witnessing on campus and, I, you know, during the, I think it was like 11 o'clock at night, and we just ran into her. We didn't know if she was saved or not. We, so we started to share the gospel. She said, no, I'm saved. And she started to come to church when and we started to disciple her. Just, just a wonderful Christian. And uh, she shared something with us I never forgot. She said she grew up in Uganda when Idi Amin, a very ruthless ruler, was in power. I mean, it was like Hitler. He was responsible for... Just slaughtering people left and right. He was just, he wasn't in his right mind. And uh, she said, you know, I actually went to school with his daughter. I've actually been in the palace, the presidential palace, because of his, my friendship with his daughter. She said, I didn't know if he'd kill me or not day by day. One day he'd be really nice. He'd give her, you know, next day, He'd say, you know what, I want to destroy Christians. And unfortunately, a, a lot happened. Before, but uh, So she said, the whole country was in fear because the law was established by him. He was in control of the laws. Ruthless men were in the country. You couldn't go out past, you know, five o'clock. You could lose your life. You had to give all your money to the, the government. You had to do this, do that. And everybody was in great fear. And right before she graduated, I never saw anybody so happy in my life. She said, have you heard the, the great news? I said, yeah, I heard of Jesus. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? She said, no, I'm not talking about that. She said, they overthrew his government. Glory to God. She said, he's not in power anymore. She said, I didn't know if I could go home or not. I didn't know what my life would be like if my parents would still be alive. And she said, everything's changed. Everything's changed. She said, the laws have changed. The law of mercy now rules. The law of goodness now rules in my country. The law of freedom now rules. The, the, man, we're free to worship now. Before there was a law you could not worship Jesus or you would die. Everything's changed. Can I tell you something? Everything's changed. Hallelujah. The enemy is no longer in power. He has been deposed. 
Colossians chapter uh, 2 verse 15 says Jesus has made an open show of him. Woo! We have a right to be excited. The laws have changed. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The laws have changed. And now they are in our favor. The law of mercy. Glory to God that supersedes judgment. You do the best you can and you miss it. And God says, you know what? I still reckon righteousness unto you. Glory to God. The law of eternal life. Hallelujah. Woo, glory to God. Wow. How long is eternity? Wow. Glory to God. The laws have changed. Praise God. Used to be you did the best you could, but if you fell short, it wasn't good enough. Now you do the best you could, and God says it's good enough because my son made up for the rest. Amen. Woo, hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. We have a reason to be excited. The laws have changed. Glory to God. So, so we, we're now in a place, praise God. I love this, that we do the best we can. And God will make up for the rest. You know, when you look at Romans 4, it says that God wrecked righteousness unto Abraham. Didn't say that Abraham came to a place that he deserved it. Now he's doing the best he can. But God says he wrecked it unto us. Now righteousness has been wrecked unto us, amen, through the blood of his son. And we are righteous through the new birth. Glory to God. Whew, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but there's, man, when we get into some scriptures, I, I tell you, if I don't jump, shout, and run, I'd have to apologize to Jesus. Amen? Right. Glory to God. And the devil's always going to be there to say this, this, and this. You can't be free now because I, I can say, you know what? I can be because God says I need to be. I can be because God says that the law of the spirit of life has now superseded the law. Amen. Of sin and death. Praise God. Woo. Hallelujah. Man, there, there is so much here. I mean, just in these few verses. And, oh man, I just want you to think about this. What gets you excited right now? Right now, what gets you excited in expectancy? And what comes against your excitement and expectancy? I mean, I think the Apostle Paul. Man, he had killed people. He had to preach in front of people that he was responsible for putting women and children in prison. Can you imagine preaching somewhere and a guy comes up to you and says, you know what? My wife and child died because of you. And he had, that happened over and over again. He put many people, when he was in that pharisaical deal, many kids and women in prison. Man, when the, the bright light came, he had gotten letters to put more women and children in prison. Wow. He's the man that wrote, there is no condemnation in Christ. In Christ Jesus. Isn't it amazing that the man that God chose to write that verse is the man that needed it the most? Mm. Jesus. Wow. wow. Mm. But see, how can a man like this enter into excitement and expectation? Because Jesus separated the past from now. Because Jesus said there's a new law. Glory to God. You're under a new law and a new day. Praise God. I was one day, I was just, I wasn't even praying, seeking God. And I had a, kind of like a, an open vision. And I saw the enemy accusing the Lord and saying, how can you make this man the head of your church, Saul? How's that even, how can you do that when he's done so much against your church and hurt so many? And I, and I saw the Lord say I don't have anybody by that name to head about church. And the devil said, Saul, the man that committed murder, put women and children in prison. What do you mean? He's the head of your church. And, I, and I, as God is my witness, I saw the Lord turn to him and say, the, the man leading my church, his name is Paul. 
Glory to God. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad for the gospel? I, I, don't, we need to be excited about the gospel. Hallelujah. My prayer today is for myself and those listening, my CD, watching my television, just for us here, that we would really understand. I, I said there's something special about today. I can't explain it. There's just something special about the grace of God. My mind can't deal with it because my mind says I can't be excited. My mind said I can't be expected. My mind says I'm not worthy. My mind says I'm condemned. My mind says this is going to work. But God says it is working. It will work. You can be expectant. You can be excited. Amen. Glory to Jesus. And you see, that truth, that law, that reality is greater, hallelujah, than the other. Whew, glory to God. And all, God wants us our agreement. Amen? I think something Mary Kay said at the woman's lunch, she said, what would she say, hope is a choice? Man, I, I can, re I can I, I relate that to my life. Hope is a choice. Amen? Lord, you're here because you love God, you're seeking God. I want to encourage us. Amen. He whom the Son says free is free indeed. Just to know God's not against us. He's for us. God is so, so for us. And uh, it's about grace. I mean, I wouldn't be here if grace didn't come to me when I was standing in front of West Penn House. Really, I would not be here. I'm not ashamed to say that. You say, well, you're saying you're weak. I, I was so weak, I would not be here. I can tell you that. But that's why we rejoice, amen, in grace. Because we are here. And we're going on. Not just going on. But we're going to put the devil to flight. Destroy him in the lives of others in their own life. An excitement and expectation. Glory to God. Amen. So let's just pray if we can. Let's just pray. Just stand with me if you will, okay? Glory to God. Hallelujah. I've said this several times, but there's just something special about today. And uh, Father, I just ask for myself and obviously for all those here, all those listening, watching, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that you would really, God, show us as never before. Lord, when it's not easy or when it seems to be just, seems to be easy but especially when it's hard. That your grace is sufficient. Your grace is sufficient. Because it's not about us. It's about you laughing us. And Father, for those that have gone through so much, listening, watching here, and I include myself in that, God, I include myself in it. Father, we ask for grace, Lord God, to be free Grace to live in the now. Grace to say what Jeremiah 29, 11 says. The plans I have for you are not for hurt, but to give you a future and a hope. God, we just loose that now. We agree with it because, Lord Jesus, we agree with you. We say you're worthy. You're faithful. And, Lord Jesus... You're everything to us. Glory to God. Uh, whoo, hallelujah. I'm going to ask us just to confess something together. And then, Dodie, I'm going to ask you to close in prayer if you would do that. And uh, hallelujah. I'm so thankful for today. I tell you, I, boy, boy this, is, this is a good. Can you just confess this with me? Just say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus I worship you. I worship you. Because you're so close to me. Because you're so close to me. You feel my hurt. You were with me in my heart. You're with me now. And Lord Jesus, your love, your grace, your power is sufficient. I receive your grace taking over, doing what I can't do so I can be free, expectant, joyful, to your glory, to your glory. 
honor and praise. I will be a vehicle of punishment to the enemy. I will be a vehicle of setting people free who think that they can never be free. To your glory, honor and praise. Whew, I don't know what that does for you.